عليكم ورحمة الله. الحمد لله. الحمد لله الواحد الأحد. الفقد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. وصلوات الله وتع... وصلوات الله وسلامه على رسوله أحمد وبعد. Uh, Wallahi, it's a pleasure to be here in uh, in familiar territory. And Wallahi, where do these rumors get started man? about numbers of kids? And <laughs> Allah Akbar. That four kids is a shame, man. Four kids is a shame. Our parents' generation, Every I, I bet if you took the average of all of our parents in here, the average that they, you know, their siblings probably would be six, seven, eight, right? I know my parents both had... 10 siblings each, right? And then, subhanAllah, a brother came to me recently. I'm going to eat chips during the lecture. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so um, I, the brother came to me recently, and he says, uh, he, says um, he had an issue, a um, uh, marital issue. And he says, uh, my wife is one of 20, one of Whoa. 20 kids. Yeah, so, so I, mean, I have four kids, it's nothing. <laughs> Don't blow it up. <laughs> Today, inshallah, we're going to talk about, um, we're going to talk about uh, modesty in Islam, inshallah. And this is a one of a, of a two-part uh, lecture, inshallah. Um, all of you in the back can hear me fine? Yeah. Good. This is one of two part lecture. Today, inshallah, it's just really about the general parameters of modesty in Islam. And next time, inshallah, we're going to get to some of the, um, you could say, nitty gritty or really particulars, especially as in regards to gender relations um, and, and related matters. You could, and you could say more um, fiqhi type of, of issues, inshallah, the ne next week, inshallah. Um, Today we have to really just lay the, the, the framework because the, this issue of haya is a very vast issue in Islam. And we start with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an Anasin radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna li kulli deenin khuluqan wa khuluqul islami al haya. And this, this hadith really gives us the full breadth of what haya, uh, what modesty really means in Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, for every religion, they have a particular and a special characteristic about them. And the characteristic of Islam is al haya, modesty. And we're really going to be using this word most of the lecture, al haya, um, which means modesty and which and the word modesty really means a lot too. Even in the English language, it means a lot. Uh, but in the Arabic language, al haya it's encompassing of a lot of different things that we're going to get into, inshallah. In Islam, modesty is an issue that really encompasses all aspects of the believer's life. It's not only like sometimes we think it just relates to the gaze, you know, um, when we look at the opposite sex, or um, as regards to dress, but it's about every single aspect of our life in regards to speech, in regards to our actions, in regards to our public life, in regards to our private life, um, in regards to everything. And the word haya, in English there's not one word for it, but it encompasses modesty, shame or shamefulness, uh, shyness, bashfulness, um, having this feeling inside of you when you want to do anything, there's, there's this internal mechanism in you that, <clears throat> uh, the, that really should be functioning for the believer whose iman is high. That's going to control what you do and how you do it as a Muslim. And so modesty is something that is not a fringe issue for the, for the mu'min. It's not something, uh, you know, it's not just one small aspect of his deen, but it's at the center of his being. Um, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith on Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-haya'u minal iman 
والإيمان في الجنة الحياء من الإيمان والإيمان في الجنة that modesty is from al-iman, it's from faith and belief. <clears throat> it's an integral part of it. And this faith and belief is, is that which will take you to Jannah, it's which, which will take you to paradise. So this is part of the uh, equation of helping you reach where we all want to get, which is paradise. Rawahu at tirmidhi And um, the word al hayat write it in just so we have it so al <coughs> hayat is um, comes from the word in arabic language that we all know even if you don't know arabic al hayat come from the same root word and um, in the arabic language the the rain, al-matar, one of the names of it is also called al-haya, without uh, hamza at the end, al-haya. Why? Because rain is that which brings life to what's on the on the earth. Um, and Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he really explained nicely the relationship between these two words, al-haya wal al-haya. Um, and, and you understand the two words since I wrote them on the board. He said. Very nicely he said, Ala Hasabi Hayat il Kalb Yakuno Fihi Kuwa to Huluk il Hayat, Wakilla to Hayat imin Mot il Kalbi or Ruh, Fakulla Makan il Kalbu Ahia can al Hayatu Atam. He said beautifully that in according to how much life a person has inside of their heart, according to how much life they have in their heart, they have. Uh, the equivalent amount of haya, of modesty. And um, a small amount of modesty in someone's heart is a sign of a dead heart. It's a sign that his soul and his heart is dead. And the more uh, modest that his heart is, I'm sorry, the more uh, life that he has in his heart, the more modest this person will be in his actions in every aspect of life. So the two are intricately, intricately um, uh, related one to the other. One of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names is Al-Hayy. Um, and in the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us, عن سلمان الفارسي قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, إن ربكم حيي كريم يستحي من عبده إذا رفع يديه إليه يدعوه he said that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is hayy, he is um, shy and bashful, and he's generous. And um, he is shy to the point when one of his servants, he raises his hands to him and he calls upon him, he makes dua, and he asks him for something, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is too shy to leave him with his hands empty. He has his hands up and Allah is too shy to leave him with his hand, you know, to leave him empty handed, to not answer his dua. Um, so this is one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his names as well. And this hadith is narrated by a tirmidhi And uh, Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, and we're going to refer to him a lot because really he spoke about this subject matter in a beautiful way. Um, he said, from the ill effects of sin, and people, they commit a lot of sin, is the elimination of al-haya, is the elimination of, of modesty, which is the lifeline of the heart. So a person that commits a lot of sin, this is something that takes out this modesty from your heart. And this haya is the origin or the beginning point of all good. And when it goes, all good of the human being goes. So wallahi, it's a really, really important matter in Islam. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he said related to this particular uh, thing in a hadith related by Sahih Muslim, Al-Hayau Kulluhu Khair, that um, modesty, everything about it is good. It leads to nothing but good. Huh? So it's um, an extremely important aspect of the believer's life. Unfortunately, we don't really talk about it that much. 
So like I said today, we're going to really give you the framework of it. Next week, we're going to talk about some of the more of the practicalities, in, like I said, in, in terms of gender relation and so forth. Uh, because we have to understand uh, the, the, the groundwork, the framework, the skeleton, before we really put in the, the other puzzles. Just like when we deal with, um, you know, we learn about our deen, and the Prophet Sallallahu he taught the Sahaba when they were in Mecca, they were taught what? What was planted firmly in their hearts? Aqidah, the belief, belief in Allah, uh, belief in, in the messenger, uh, 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 belief in the messenger himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the Quran, and these basic aspects of belief. Later on in Medina, more rules, how to live, what to do, how to marry, how to pray, the specifics, all of these came. So today we're really just going to talk about this, these basic uh, beliefs and understanding. Next week we'll talk about some of the specifics in regards to the uh, fiqh issues. So uh, Ibn Qayyim, um, he says that uh, when haya is gone, a person does whatever they want. I mean, a person does whatever they want because they're stripped of that that thing that really helps them to uh, to keep away from sin. And certain people, they get to a point where they don't even care about the, the wrong that they do. And they become so um, drenched and, you know, flooded <coughs> and uh, bogged down in this swamp of sin that they're not able to get out of it. And they don't even care if people know about their actions, their their bad actions. And the, 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 the believer, he's very conscious about people around him, what they think of him, his image, his reputation. We have an attitude that the general American attitude is, well, I don't care what people think about me, right? This is, a, this is we're independent people, we're free people, we're free thinkers, I can dress like I want, the way I want, color my hair green, purple, yellow, it doesn't matter. Um, I can pierce my ears 20 times and my nose 50 times, right? It doesn't matter how people see me. This is the general American attitude. But the Muslim is very conscious of, what, of how he looks, of how he's seen by others, and so forth. So when a person, he commits sin um, to this point, uh, and he doesn't care about it, and then some people even to the point that they, uh, they start bragging about all of the, you know, basically the haram they do, and they've gone way uh, out of bounds. And Ibn Qayyim, he says, nicely, he says, مَنْ لَا حَيَاءَ فِيهِ مَيِّتٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَشَقِيٌّ فِي الْآخِرَةِ That the person who doesn't have any modesty left in him, he, in this world, he's dead. His heart, he, you know, like we say, he's the walking dead, right? And in the next world, he's uh, from the miserable and the wretched. Meaning he's going to be in, in the hellfire. Um, the Prophet wasallam he said in the hadith, he said, إِذَا لَمْ تَسْتَحِي فَاصْنَعْ مَا شِئْتْ He said, if you um, don't have any modesty, then do whatever you want. Huh? Do whatever you want. Um, this in the Arabic language is what we call لَفْضُهُ uh, أَمْرُ وَمَعْنَاهُ خَبَرُ وَمَعْنَاهُ التَّوْبِيخُ وَالتَّهْدِيد That the, the, this particular statement um, the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Fasna mashit. He said, do whatever you want. He's not giving you license to do whatever you want, obviously, but he's telling you that if this is the, if this is what you're going to be, you're going to strip yourself of all modesty, um, then do whatever you want, and uh, uh, you know, and, and you're going to be uh, in, in bad shape. The underlying meaning is that al haya is what prevents you from doing wrong. Right? Look at the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, if you don't have any haya, modesty, then do whatever you want. So the underlying me meaning being what? That this is the thing that stops you from doing wrong. This issue of modesty. Um, this is the barrier to all evil. Um, uh, and Al-Aini, one of the great scholars, he said that your leaving haya, you're leaving modesty, not practicing modesty, is worse than you actually committing, you know, whatever particular sin you're committing. Because you stripped yourself of that guard that prevents you from, from doing further sin. Huh? So you see, subhanAllah, how, how serious the matter is. You strip yourself of that, of that modesty, of that chastity, of that, um, that 
uh, having <coughs> being bashful, then you strip that barrier that stops you from doing other things. Um, just like when you have, uh, you know, nowadays everybody, we only drink, uh, nobody drinks tap water anymore, right? How many people in here drink tap water? People probably look at you weird now, right? <laughs> everybody has to buy water. Subhanallah, in my day, if you bought water, you were crazy. <laughs> Pay for water. Um, I still hesitate to buy water from the vending machine. I'm going to pay for water. What's the right, you know, my essential right? Anyways, when you, when, you, um, when you don't filter water, that water, at least we think today, I don't really think so though, is tainted, right? It's not purified. The same thing, when you don't have that filter of, of modesty, then all of your actions are going to be tainted. And uh, it's going to put you... Uh, into problems. And the ulama, they considered uh, modesty a quality that distinguishes us as human beings from, the, from animals. Modesty is something that distinguishes human beings from animals. And why? Because animals, they tend to, not they tend, they do, they do what they feel. And they don't think about it. They do what their instincts tell them. Automatic. Um, but we as human beings, we have this filter. When we have a desire, we have a need, we have something, well, we think about it first, or at least we should. Um, should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I involve myself in this? And then we act. We have this filter, modesty, that helps us to make correct actions. The less modesty, the less filtering. And the more the human being, he resembles the, the animal himself because he's just basing his action based on instinct. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said in this powerful ayah, um, Surah Al-A'raf, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا That these people, they have hearts that they, they cannot, they cannot, you know, they don't have any um, insight that they gain from their hearts. And they have eyes which they're not able to see. They don't have clear vision. And they have ears by which they're not able to hear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting a certain category of people down. And, um, and subhanAllah, and these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave the, 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 um, the, the animals, these same instincts of sight, of hearing, um, and they use them what they're supposed to use them for. But the human being, what he's supposed to use them for is something different. Yes, it's to, to have a physical sense of what's going on around us, but also to be able to know what's right and to know what's wrong. And when the person, he doesn't use those instincts to do what's right or wrong, then what, Allah, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? أُولَٰئِكَ كَالْأَنْعَامِ بَلْ هُمْ أَضَلٍ Right? Those people are like cattle, and no, yet, rather they're even worse than cattle. Because at least animals, they use their, their uh, what do you call it, their senses for what they're supposed to be used for. But a person who doesn't, then he's went even more astray. <laughs> These people are heedless, and they don't even uh, uh, pay any attention, they don't even know what's going on, right? So, um, we talk about haya, and it's a very vast and wi wide subject. It's hard to really uh, to capture it because there's a lot of shades to it. Um, and um, uh, when you know, when when haya, when modesty it exists uh, inside of a believer, it's something that should show on his outside. Somebody should be able to look at you and say, "Wow, that person, there's something different about him." I work in the high school. And in the high school, um, I can pick out those kids that are Christian, automatic, that are good Christians, that they actually practice their faith and they try to live decent. You can pick them out. They're very easy to pick, them, pick out. Why? Because they, when you meet them, they don't, they don't use foul language. Or at least some kids, they try to you know, um, filter their mouth when they sit with you. But as soon as they walk out the door, you hear them. But these kids, <laughs> right? Uh, you can, even when they walk out, they're, they're composed. And they, they're people, they carry themselves with respect. 
Um, they, they say please, they say thank you, they're courteous, right? This is, and I can tell these are nice young Christian men or, or girls or boys, right? just by the way they act. The Muslim, he should be able to be identified the same way, if not even more, because he has this filter of modesty that, um, that portrays itself in, in how he deals with everyone else. We're going to talk about um, what Ibn al-Qayyim in his book Madarij al-Salikin, he listed 10 shades of, of modesty. 10 different shades, because modesty is so broad, he kind of helped us to categorize it all. So if you're taking notes, this is a good, this is the, the part that you really want to maybe focus on. Um, that we can, you know, find some benefit in trying to uh, find application to this concept in our life. So the shades of modesty. Number one, he said the first shade of modesty is what's called haya ul jinaya. Um, modesty as it relates to committing sin. What do we mean that? How can there be modesty when you commit sin? It seems like a contradiction. In fact, um, you know, the, the believer, as, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us, Kullu bani Adam khata. Right? Every single um, son of Adam, he makes mistakes, he commits sins. But the best of those people who make mistakes are those people who turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is yani, something that human be it's something that Muslims do, even good Muslims, they commit sin. They make mistakes. But when they commit that sin, there is still that that feeling of modesty, of shyness, of bashfulness, of shamefulness that they did something that they uh, wronged. Um, somebody else or that they wronged Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Adam alayhi salam, the first man, when he ran in the Jannah after he disobeyed Allah, after he ate from the tree he wasn't supposed to eat from, and he ran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses him and he says, Afirara minni ya, ya Adam? He says, are you running away to get away? Are you running to get away from me, ya Adam? But Adam says, la. He says, بَلْ يَا uh, He says, لَا يَا رَبْ بَلْ حَيَاءً مِنْكِ He says, no, Ya Allah, he says, but I'm doing it out of modesty, out of shame, out of shyness from you. That's why I'm running. Uh, so, just as um, uh, when, when you do something wrong, it's a, it's a good feeling if you feel in your heart that deep regret. You know, somebody, you do something uh, terribly wrong to another person or you do something uh, wrong in, in, in regards to Allah, you break one of his rights upon you, then um, you have this feeling inside of you, like you can't sit still. You're like, oh my God, what did I do? And you can't sit still. You drive around aimlessly, right? You wake up at night, you start crying, you're asking Allah's forgiveness, that's a good thing. That means that you have this modesty inside of you. You made a mistake, but you turn to Allah, um, in, in, and you have this, this type of, of bashfulness um, uh, or shyness in, in terms of breaking Allah's uh, rights. That's number one. Number two, it's called Haya ut taqsir Haya ut taqsir This is um, modesty as it relates to falling short or being neglectful. So, just like the angels that glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala day and night, as Allah says, Yusabbihun al layla wa nahar. La yafturun that they um, they glorify Allah day and night, and they don't get tired of it. You know, they don't day and night, and they don't get tired. They keep going. They keep ticking. Right? They keep worshiping Allah. But when these same angels they meet Allah on the day of judgment, even though for some of them for maybe hundreds of years they worship Allah straight without pause. Then they come to Allah on the Day of Judgment and they say, Subhanak ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. They say, Glory to you, Ya Allah. We didn't worship you the way we should have worshipped you. SubhanAllah. The angels, they la ya'soon Allah ma amrahum wa yaf'alun ma yu'marun. They do, they don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever He ordered them to do. They do everything they're told to do. They don't disobey Allah. That's their nature. That's the way they're, that's their makeup. But when they meet Allah, they say, we didn't do enough, Ya Allah. So this is called 
this this is called a modesty in regards to falling short. So us, how does that relate to us? Um, sometimes we do, you know, uh, we, we, we have a good streak and we, we get close to Allah. Ramadan, maybe we pray Qiyamul Layl. Uh, maybe some of us, you even make i'tikaf in the masjid, uh, maybe a day or two or more, and you feel close to Allah. But after that time, you should still have that feeling, yeah, Allah, I didn't do enough. Oh Allah, I didn't do enough. This modesty, this um, humbleness that you're showing uh, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, it's called Hayaul Ijlal. Is modesty, wahua Hayaul Ma'rifa. This is modesty as relates to um, uh, holding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a certain esteem and respect and reverence. Uh, and it's based on knowledge. So, the more the servant of Allah, he knows his Lord, the more haya he has towards him. Because based on this knowledge, you know who he is, you, your, um, your feeling towards him, your, uh, uh, the more that you, you, know, you know about him, the more uh, modesty that you have towards him. The more conscious you are of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more conscious you are of your actions based on what you know. There is a story of a man. Um, he was one of the Salihin. His name was Shaqiq ibn uh, Salama. He, um, one time he went out with some of his companions at night. And they went out. It was a scary night, as they described it. You know, you can imagine the scene. Black night, fog, and these creepy trees, right? And going through the forest. And while they're going through the forest, they find a man just sleeping there in the middle of this scary place, right? This is a place where Jason and Freddy and uh, these guys come out, right? So uh, this man is sleeping there as if it's nothing. They wake him up. They say, um, they say to him, why are you sleeping in such a place? What, what brought you out here? He raises his head up and he says, إِنِّي أَسْتَحْيِ مِنْ ذِي الْعَرْشِ أَنْ يَعْلَمَ أَنِّي أَخَافُ شَيْئًا دُونَ SubhanAllah. He says that I am, af and I am afraid, uh, I I'm shy or I'm bashful in front of Allah, in front of the, the, the possessor of the throne, in front of Allah, that He will know that I am afraid of being, uh, of being afraid of anything other than Him. So this person, he, he, he has this, he holds Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this great uh, light and that he feels that I shouldn't be afraid of anything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? And then he puts his head down and he goes back to sleep as if it's nothing, right? Um, we ask Allah to give us iman like these people. Say ameen. Number four, haya ul karam. Modesty as it relates to generosity. Modesty as it relates to generosity. So like I mentioned in the beginning, we're talking about modesty in all of its different facets, in all of its different shades. So in regards to generosity, the, the nice example we have of that is when the Prophet وسلم, he got married to Sayyidah Zainab bin to Jahsh. Um, when he got married to her, uh, it said that they had a walima, you know, the wedding feast, and it was earlier in the day. The Prophet ﷺ, he invited people to his house. The people sat and they ate. Most of them left. Some of them stepped back. Some of them stayed behind. You, know, you have these guests that don't want to leave. So the Prophet ﷺ, <laughs> he goes. Some guys are laughing because you have this problem with your brothers, huh? Um, <laughs> so uh, the Prophet ﷺ, he goes into the other. He gets up and he go, he, he's, he's too shy. The Prophet ﷺ is too bashful. He has too much um, uh, shyness, modesty about him to tell the people, okay, brothers, you know, time to go. You, you spent five hours here now, go home, right? Uh, so the Prophet said, what, did, what does he do? He stands up and he walks, he walks into the other room, um, hoping that they'll, they'll get a hint. He comes back, they're still there. So the Prophet sits with them a little, then he gets up and he goes out. And then he comes back and they're actually and they're gone at this point. So the Prophet, says, but it shows you the beautiful character of the Prophet says, um, that he's too shy, he's too bashful to tell people, well, that's enough. 
because he's they're his guest and he's entertaining them. Um, you know, um, this is a softness that we should show with our brothers and sisters. Um, this ex, this this uh, way of dealing with people in an easy way, of that extra leeway that we give people when they step into our realm. And alhamdulillah, you know, you see people. Um, I think we as Muslims, we still have this to a large extent, and relative, relatively as compared to other people. When we go somewhere and we ride with each other in the car, right? You go to a conference, you go to a seminar, you go to the masjid, you go somewhere. Um, most, at least I know, I haven't had this experience. I hope it hasn't changed. We ride in a car and you go somewhere and I, I rode with another brother and I get there and I come back home. He doesn't, he's not going to ask me for gas money, right? He's not going to stop at the gas station and say, oh, brother, can you help me out? Muslims, we don't do that. I hope you guys don't do that. <laughs> huh? Um, but this doesn't happen with the brothers I hang around with, at least. But when non-Muslims, Allah says, you can't go down one mile without <laughs> them, you know, uh, stopping at the gas station, gas prices four fifty a gallon, and they want something. But Muslims, we still have this generosity about ourselves that, you know, when people are in our realm, that we treat them in that way. When you, so, so when people come to your house, you don't ask people, as uh, Sheikh Abdul Fattah, Abu Ghudda, he says in his book, In Islamic Manners, he says, when people come to your house, you don't ask them to stand up uh, and help you wash the dishes or to get the food. You do everything yourself. You treat them and, and you honor them as your guests. And you have that, uh, that shyness and bashfulness about not rushing them out and so forth. Number five, Haya ul Hishma. Um, this is uh, modesty, this is a sort of bashfulness um, that, that we should have uh, when it comes especially to certain intimate matters hmm, that take place namely between men and women. Um, we should have this sort of bashfulness. So Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, um, he he had an issue, um, and he said about himself, he said, كُنْتُ رَجُلًا مَذَّاءً فَاسْتَحْيَيْتُ أَنْ أَسْأَلَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, I was a, a, a person, I had a lot of what's called al-madi. Madi is like this uh, white uh, fluid, the substance that, that discharges. Um, and he wasn't sure is he supposed to make wudu or ghusl or what? Does it break his He doesn't know. But he says, I'm too shy to ask the Prophet ﷺ. Why is he too shy to ask the Prophet ﷺ? Huh? Yeah. Yes, hayat. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it has to do with intimate matters. It has to do with intimate matters with whom? His spouse. His spouse is whom? Sayyidina Fatima radiallahu anha, who's the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu So he doesn't want to go to the Prophet Sallallahu and say that, um, uh, Ya Rasulullah, I have this issue and you know, what, what, does, what am I supposed to do? Because he's, he's, he's shy, he's bashful. He knows that this is Rasulullah and he's dealing with his daughter. He doesn't want to put certain pictures in the Prophet Sallallahu mind. Right, but at the same time, from his uh, from his uh, you know his good thinking, he doesn't just let the matter go. He sends somebody else. He sends Mughdad, uh to go ask about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi about this issue uh, without mentioning him by name. So the shyness doesn't prevent him from learning what Islam says about this uh, particular matter. Um, so you know, there's just certain things you don't say around certain people. Uh, as a matter of bashfulness and a matter of being, uh, just having good uh, adab and, and being um, uh, conscious of, of others around you, especially when it comes to these intimate affairs. Number six, what Ibn Qayyim called Haya al istihqari wa istisgar al nafs. This modesty that's related to. Um, uh, putting down, putting yourself down, belittling, belittling, how do you say it? Belittling yourself and, um, you know, make, keeping yourself humble. So this is the hayat that one has with Allah when he asks Allah for some of his needs. 
But he feels that he's nobody in front of Allah. Huh? You want something from Allah, but Ya Allah, I'm nobody in front of you. Huh? So the, you're, you're humbling yourself, uh, belitt belittling yourself. Two reasons for this. Number one, that the questioner, the one who's asking, he, he makes himself small and he blows up his sin. Huh? He makes his sin big, even though it might be something small. But because he feels, he knows uh, who Allah is, he, he thinks that his sin is so big. And second, the other reason for this is that he's magnifying, you're glorifying the one whom you're asking. Which is whom? Which is Allah. Huh? So that you feel you're humble and you know, uh, you think that your sin is big and you know that the one that you're asking is even bigger. Um, that's why some of the scholars, they used to say this nice saying, they say that لا تنظروا إلى صغر الدم ولكن انظروا إلى كبرياء من عصيت Beautiful saying. They said that don't look at how small the sin that you're doing is, no matter how small it is, but look at how great and how magnanimous and how uh, how awesome the one that you're sinning against is, which is Allah. Hmm? So don't think that your sin is small, but have some shyness, have some uh, some bashfulness in front of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, knowing that He is great and that He does, and that you know you feel bad about what you do in front of Him. Number seven, Haya al Mahabba, um, which is a modesty that's as it relates to love and affection as it relates to love and affection. So, um, this is a feeling that one has, uh, the one who loves has towards the one whom he loves. Hayaul muhib lil mahboob. Right? So when the person that he loves comes to mind, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he comes to mind, and you find these certain moments, you, f you feel Allah, you feel that attachment and that love to Him, Goosebumps, you get goosebumps, right? And you, your heart skips a beat, and you, you stop and you pause. Um, sometimes we have this feeling. You may have this feeling sometimes, um, and ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to bless us with this feeling all the time, to be close to Allah. Um, this, Allah is a big ni'mah that you get to have this feeling and be humbled by this feeling of, of feeling close to Allah. You know, sometimes you feel that when maybe you go sit on the beach at sunset and you just dawns on you how great Allah is and how small you are and how blessed you are that He guided you to this deen, right? Sometimes you may have this feeling when you're sitting on top of, on, on top of the mountain and you're just contemplating on life. You're sitting on the top of Bruin Walk, right? And you're looking up at the sky, right? Um, and in Ramadan, maybe Qiyam al-Layl, this feeling comes into your heart. This is also another type of, of uh, uh, modesty. Number eight, we said there are ten. Haya al ubudiyya which is this um, um, modesty as it relates to this servitude, um, this humble veneration that you that you have uh, towards Allah. This this haya is a mix between love and love and fear. Um, you, you, you feel that you're almost not worthy of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? You feel yourself uh, so insignificant. Number nine, I'm going to go through the last couple quickly because it took a lot of time on this. Haya uh, al-Sharafi wal izza This um, modesty as it relates to uh, honor and dignity. And that the dignified, uh, a noble person you know, he, he has some status. When they don't reach their poten potential in terms of doing something, um, in terms of giving time, effort, or money, or whatever it is, they feel shy for not having given or done enough. And then the last one is what's called Haya ul Mar'i min Nafsi. Is this modesty that a person has towards his own self, towards his own self. And Ibn Qayyim, he says, this is the best kind. And the person, as if he's almost two different beings. So, you see yourself uh, uh, from, you know, the noble part of yourself, sees this other part of yourself and, and looks down at it when you do something wrong. 
Huh? Um, you, 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 you feel bad and you feel ashamed and you feel shy for not doing enough. And from your own self, not in, even in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but from your own self. Man, I didn't do enough. I, shouldn't, I should have done more. And he says, this is the best um, level. Why? Because, and he says nicely in Arabic, فَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا إِسْتَحْيَ مِن نَفْسِهِ فَهُوَ أَنْ يَسْتَحْيَ مِن غَيْرِهِ أَجْدَوْ Allahu Akbar. He says, because when the person, he is uh, shy of his own self, then when it comes, when it's in regards to somebody else, he's going to be even more um, deserving or more worthy of being uh, shy. Huh? So that, that's something that, you know, um, that is very powerful when you have that shyness of yourself, uh, of your own self, and when it reaches to that point. So these are the different shades of, of modesty. So um, modesty is important as a motivator. And this is important. See, modesty shouldn't be something that brings you down. We talked about some of the concept, some of the concepts, and we don't want people to feel that okay, well, I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that, and then you feel you come down. Or some people say, well, I'm not doing enough, and yeah, I'm shy and I'm modest about that, but then it brings you down. No, that it should be something that's a motivator and um, helps to regulate what you do, but not to bring you down. Um, and not to the point that it prevents you from learning your deen. Uh, that you're too shy to ask sensitive questions about your deen. This is not haya. This is something else. This is something else. This is uh, being too weak. This is being, but this is not modesty. This is not shyness. Um, that you don't, you know, you need to know some things about men. And, you need to know about intimacy between men and women. What's allowed? What's not allowed? Um, and I'm, you know, to be, to, certain things come up. Uh, and you don't know uh, what to do, but you're too shy to ask. Because it's regarding a sensitive issue, but you don't want to ask somebody. This is not from Haya. Um, this is something else. Um, two types of people, they will never learn their deen. They will never understand their deen. Who are these people? One we already mentioned earlier. It's a subject to what we're talking about. The person who's shy. The person who's too shy, who's too bashful, he, he thinks he's too modest, but it's not. Uh, this person will never learn his deen. Why? Because he'll never ask. And the second person? The arrogant person. Very good. Very good. The, the arrogant person. And uh, Mujahid, Rahimullah, uh, uh, one of the great Tabi'i uh, tabi scholars, he said, لا يتعلم العلم مستحين ولا متكبر. Right? that two people will never learn this deen. One, a person who's too shy, and two, a person who is arrogant. The shy person, he's not going to ask the question, he's too shy. The arrogant person, he thinks he already knows, so I don't need to ask. Huh? Uh, so make sure you're not from one of these people. Sayyidah Aisha, radiallahu anha, she said a nice saying. She said, نِعْمَ nisa نِسَاءُ الْأَنصَارِ لَمْ يَمْنَعْهُنَّ الْحَيَاءُ أَنْ يَتَفَقَّهْنَ فِي الدِّينِ that she said, uh, what a blessed women are the women of the Ansar. That their modesty did not prevent them from learning about their deen, from understanding their deen. And there's an incident, for example, of Um Sulaim, one of the Sahabiyat, one of the great women Sahaba. She comes to the Prophet ﷺ and she says, Ya Rasulullah, inna Allah la yastahi min al haqq She says, Allah. She says, Ya Rasulullah, Allah is not shy or bashful of the truth. So she's, she's presenting, you know, uh, she's coming to the Prophet ﷺ, indicating that she's going to ask something that's a little bit sensitive. And she asked the Prophet ﷺ, هَلْ عَلَى الْمَرْأَةِ مِنْ غُسْلٍ إِذَا هِيَ إِحْتَمَلَتْ uh, إِذَا هِيَ إِحْتَلَمَتْ Sorry. Um, does a woman have to make ghusl, wash herself, if she has a wet dream. Uh, this is a sensitive issue. But it doesn't stop her from learning about her deen. And she very direct with the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ, says, Naam, idha uh, ra'at al -ma. Yes, if she had, uh, if she emitted um, some fluid. Uh, so this, uh, she was not, her modesty, she was a modest woman. She was a, a bashful woman. But when it came to knowing about her deen, that didn't, hold her breath. 
And these are questions, you know, subhanAllah, that even men sometimes are afraid to ask. But the women in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not afraid of this. Um, also, what is not haya? What else is not a feeling of, of, uh, of modesty? To under, sometimes to understand what something is, you have to exclude what it not is. What it, what it is not. And those, I'm a social worker, so when we deal with mental illnesses and things, we have to exclude medical issues uh, before we start looking at mental issues, right? Ruling things out. And in the, the Arabs, they say something like, they say, uh, When you know the opposite of something else, then you're able to distinguish the other thing even better. So, some people think that to be modest is to be like this meek, uh, introverted, quiet, you know, hunched down type of person who just walks through life and, and you know, this is being a person of modesty. You don't talk to men, you don't talk to women, you don't talk to nobody, right? You just go through life, right? Uh, and there's people like this. Well, I mean, I know brothers, I've known them for 10 years. I've known them for 10 years, and I've maybe heard five words come out of their mouth. They just don't talk. But I'm sure they're good people, but you meet them and they don't talk. So in any case, um, this, is not, this is not modest. You know, just being this um, type of meek personality. Um, these uh, characteristics are not becoming of the mu'min. Um, when uh, in the book, Fadlullah uh, um, al the, the author, he talks about, he gives a very good example. It's, a, it's kind of an explicit example, but I think it's a very good example. He says, he gives the example of a, this meek sort of wom woman. This woman, um, a man approaches her in seclusion, right, in a dark alley or somewhere, and may Allah protect our sisters, say, Amin. Amin. Um, you know, a man approaches a sister somewhere and, um, and tries to force himself upon her. She, thinking or being used to this meek way of dealing with things, or this what she thinks is modest, which is which is wrong, she doesn't she doesn't scream out, she doesn't cry out, she doesn't say anything, uh, because she thinks that that's somehow da damaging to her uh, to her modesty. Is that I mean, you're in a position where someone's about to violate you and you stay quiet? No. Uh, in that case, this is an issue where you you yell out, you scream out, you do whatever you can. To, um, to get people's attention. So I thought this was a very good example. Um, and that, you know, these, this woman that actually yells out and cries out and her story is told and she protects herself, she becomes, she's a mujahida. She's a person that we, we, we look to as one of our heroes. Huh? Because she, she survived something, she fought against something. This, nothing to do with modesty. The fact that you, you just crunched down and, and you succumbed. And, no way. Um, so I just thought that was a good uh, example uh, uh, worth uh, sharing. Um, so that's basically, you know, certain things that modesty is not. A couple last things that we end on this, inshallah. Um, and like I said, this is a, this is a very vast subject. Next week we're going to touch the particulars for those that came late. A couple of descriptions of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understanding really uh, what Haya is by looking at his personality and certain interactions of his. And it's narrated in Sahih Muslim and Sahih al-Bukhari عن أبي سعيد الخضري كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشد حياء من العذراء في خدرها um, the Prophet وسلم, he had more modesty. He was more shy and bashful than the virgin woman in her private room. Huh? Which is basically telling us that, you know, a, a, a young woman who's, who's shy and who's bashful, she doesn't, she doesn't voice out, she doesn't speak out loud. The Prophet وسلم, was more shy than that. Um, but at the same time, the hadith continues, says, فَإِذَا رَأَى شَيْئًا يَكْرَهُهُ but when something, when there was something that he didn't like, we would be able to see it on his face. Um, and of course, this is not regarding things relating to this deen. When it came to the deen and the Prophet ﷺ, he saw something wrong, he would correct it. But other than that, if things upset him or bothered him, but uh, his, his shyness and his bashfulness 
would stop him from voicing out and uh, you know being being rude or or, or uh, disrespectful or anything like this. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu was of the greatest character, uh, was of the greatest character, and he this is how he would display his dismay. Would it would be seen on his face, but he would never tell anybody. You're taking too long. You know when the Prophet Sallallahu when he would shake somebody's hand, that he would he, he wouldn't remove his hand until they would remove their hand. He wouldn't tell somebody, yeah, that's enough already, you know, or take his hand. He wouldn't, the Prophet Sallallahu he wouldn't, um, when, some, when he would talk to people, he would stand and he would look at them. And he would only turn away when they turn away. Huh? Um, all of the, 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 the way he dealt with people was, well, he's so beautiful. Um, and it showed how uh, beautiful his modesty was. The last um, beautiful example that we find of modesty as relates to the Prophet Sallallahu And his whole life was a, a life of beautiful balance and uh, um, bashfulness in front of Allah, being humble and easy with people. And, and he, may Allah um, help these people who speak bad about the Prophet Sallallahu If you understood him and his life and how he dealt with people and the interactions that he, he had, Wallahi, you would, these people have no, um, no uh, shame or shyness or anything left in their heart to say what they do about the Prophet Don't even know anything and they speak. Wallahi, they don't know anything and they open their mouths. Anyways, the last incident uh, that we're going to talk about, inshallah, this is kind of a lead up until ne into next week, is when the Prophet wasallam. we read in the story that's related in Sahih Muslim, uh, Sayyidah Aisha, she says, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was lying down in my house. And his, either his two um, thighs or his two ankles were exposed. Okay? Like his pants were kind of rolled up. Or his izar that they used to wear then. And she says that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he came in and he, he sought permission to come in. And he was given permission by the Prophet sallallahu um, And he stayed in sitting as he was. Then Umar radiallahu anhu, he comes, he sought, seeks permission to come in. The Prophet sallallahu grants him permission, he comes in. The Prophet stays as he is. Then Uthman, radiallahu anhu, he comes in, he seeks permission. The Prophet grants him permission, he comes in. But before he comes in, and the Prophet knows it's Uthman, the Prophet sallallahu he kind of sits up straight. He, you, know, you know, when you slouch, and he, he sits up straight, and he like straightens out his clothes. And then Uthman comes in, uh, and uh, um, um, and then Sayyidah Aisha, she asked him afterwards. She says, Abu Bakr and Umar, they came in, and you just sat normal. You didn't change your, your, your posture or anything. But when, when Uthman comes in, why do, you, you know, why do you take on this other uh, posture? And the Prophet wasallam, he says in these beautiful words, he says, أَلَا أَسْتَحْيِ مِنْ رَجُلٍ تَسْتَحْيِ مِنْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allahu Akbar And should I not be shy and bashful in front of a man that even the angels are bashful in front of him? This was Sayyidina Uthman. What do we learn from this hadith? Number one, we learn the, um, the great uh, personality of Uthman and how shy he was in front of Allah. It said that he wouldn't even bathe himself um, while, you know, in the nude. Uh, because he was that bashful, that shy in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, the, the Muslim, he shouldn't walk around his house, uh, and he shouldn't walk around his own house or in anywhere <laughs> naked. Um, one man, he came to the Prophet sallam, he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, I made my own house, can I walk around as such? And the Prophet sallam, he says, are you, not, uh, ashamed, are you not ashamed or don't you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you at all times? So this was Sayyidina Uthman. Secondly, what we learn from that is that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu his respect that he showed towards his companions. Sayyidina Uthman was whom? Related to the Prophet. Huh? Who? What's their relationship? The Prophet is Sayyidina Uthman's father-in-law, right? He's married, uh, two of his daughters married to Sayyidina Uthman. And he said, if I had a third daughter, I would marry to her. Not at the same time, but one passed away and then another one uh, passed away. And he says, if I had another one, I would have married to him. 
when a father-in-law towards their son-in-law, they had kind of have an upper hand. But look how the Prophet ﷺ deals with him. He's uh, uh, shy in front of him. The Prophet ﷺ, who is the father-in-law, he's shy in front of his son-in-law. Huh? Because he respects him to that point. And this is how Muslims should have this type of mutual respect towards each other. We're going to pick up on this point uh, next week and continue from there.